Welcome to another OCD Recovery Instagram Live. Haven't been on here for a while, so I thought I'd come on here and quickly do some questions and answers and uh, get those questions covered. Put some lights on in here, one second. So anything you want to ask about OCD, ask away. I will cover that. So uh, what was I talking about on Instagram in the posts in relation to, uh, that might be a good topic to start with. I was talking about what did I think was, was in, in, in uh, the future for OCD. So I think virtual reality is going to become very, very mainstream. I think it will be really big for exposures. I think, uh, well, well I'm, I'm looking to be doing work with virtual reality soon, starting work with that and uh, helping guide uh, sort of software for virtual reality to sort of from, from a, a voice perspective. But what I would like to do is like to bring myself into the virtual reality software, not as an individual, as an avatar, but just as a sort of uh, m m the things that I know about OCD and my coaching into that to help with the exposures. I would like to do that. Uh, so I'd like to be working in, in part inside that software. So I think virtual reality will be a, a big thing and I'd like to definitely be a, um, making changes and be a part of that, which I, which I am aiming to do so. Uh, and I think that will become the, the sort of future of how a lot of OCD is worked with through virtual reality because it's so good for getting into lots of the fears like existential, POCD and so on that's harder to do exposures for. So I think that will be good. Uh, and in relation to where I was talking about an actual cure, I do think that OCD will get cured at some point. Up until now, it's not possible to cure it. Recovery is where you can't tell the difference between having it or not. So it doesn't, um, where, where, no one said not, not having it or not, but you can't tell the difference between before you had it uh, and then suffering. So this, for me, there's no difference between having, uh, when, when I used to not have OCD and now, but when I was suffering, my life was completely taken over by it. So it's a very different situation. Uh, so that you get to that position, but cure would mean that there's no OCD there whatsoever. Uh, now, in terms of for somebody who's recovered, you, you, you can only see, you can only see it in very slight areas from time to time in your life. So it's sort of 99.999% not affecting you. However, uh, to have it actually cured and gone would be a good would be a good thing because it would mean that people that wouldn't have to go through so much work to get better. It would mean a lot of people that find it difficult to get better would get better. Uh, it would mean uh, a lot less people would have to take medication and so on. It would mean that parts of the world where, well, it depends because it, it, it depends on how the, the cure would come about because it, it would probably start off being very expensive or only for a very few people and then, and then broaden out. But imagine where the cure will come in is say the likes of Elon Musk will bring about Neuralink which will be if you if you actually watch on um, uh, what well he's there's lots of videos about him talking about Neuralink, uh, but a particularly good ones. Let's just plug this charger in. The particularly good ones are where he uh, with um, Joe Rogan. The last uh, Elon Musk talk is very good in terms of talking about um, how neuro Neuralink affects uh, what what's it going to do for things. And basically, what will happen is sort of an inch square will be cut through the th through the skull and then they will be implanting a thing which is like the apple watch about a sort of inch square that will go inside and then that will will bring us in line with ai in the future because obviously if ai is advancing very fast which it will and will take over we'll get left behind so it's designed to 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 bring us up in line with ai so that would then be in the brain and then that would be able to change many things it'd be able to change injuries paralysis uh, different neurological disorders and be able to treat things like anxiety and depression, especially OCD. So I imagine that will come in and cure directly OCD in the brain at that point. Now, we don't know what complications are going to be involved um, in that, in getting to that point to do that. Um, we don't know what's going to happen in there um, and, and how, how that's going to happen, but it's looking very likely. And um, for only from what I've heard from Elon Musk, he says that they're about five to ten years away from being able to do that. Now, 
you've got to be careful with those sort of timelines because they always change. Uh, they, they, they change quite a bit. Uh, if it, another, another guy that is work I follow closely, uh, Aubrey de Grey, who's working on improving longevity uh, and showing that, the, you know, humans, the only reason we live a lot longer than we used to, um, but the main reason we die is because of the shortness, uh, because of, I think, it's, I think it's telomeres or something like that, where the shortening of that, which means the aging process. But basically what happens is if they can stop that and stop the body breaking down, then humans should be able to live two, three, four, five hundred years uh, and so on. And that's what they're trying to work on. So that will be a big change in things. And people have always been sceptical about that. But they're, they're saying that now that they're sort of five to ten years away from that as well. So the world's coming into a place where things are changing very quickly. Uh, obviously, we're at a time where things are also very dangerous uh, in terms of look at like what's just happened with COVID at the moment and look at what happens with uh, wars and so on. So things can get very bad as, as well. So we're going into a great period and also a scary period. So it's always like that with human survival. We're always at that sort of that battle of, of trying to survive and trying to make it through uh, in that very small window. Um, so do, do, what do I think about OCD being cured? Do I think it's likely in the next five to 10 years? Yeah, I think it is pretty likely um, in one of those formats. Um, I think things like DNA and CRISPR, which is another f future t technology that's coming about now, uh, will change the way the, 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 the different um, mental disorders come about in our DNA by changing that. So there'll be a lot less people with OCD, I imagine, in the future. Uh, there'll be lots of variations that will bring about change. I think virtual reality is going to make a change to 70 to 80 percent of cases probably won't get into all in relation to OCD and anxiety, but we'll certainly get in a lot. Um, I think that a lot of because it can mimic so much reality, the same as anything does computer games or pornography still creates a sensation, even though the brain because the brain can't tell the difference. And that's the same as how the virtual reality interface will work because we won't be able to tell the difference uh, between reality and it when we're in it. So it will create, we'll be able to create the same helpful changes as we would in if, uh, exposures if they were in reality. So I think that's going to make a big change. Uh, so I, I think it's very important to cover these points because otherwise people get, what happens is people get sad uh, when they're really struggling and think there's absolutely no hope, which isn't true because we always show that there's hope help right now. Uh, you, you can recover and you just have to do these certain, uh, have a better understanding of OCD and change your relationship with OCD and the thoughts and so on, as well as get under the, the core fears and break down and dispute the irrational beliefs and all these different things to help to get under OCD so you can get better. However, at the same time as doing that, there are people that uh, are suffering maybe with another mental illness uh, with other complications and so on, and they can feel very uh, low and very disheartened. And I actually think that uh, although that they can get better and there is, it's a bumpy road, it's very important to think of these future things that are changing because they are changing very fast. Five, ten years is a very short time in terms of a lifetime. So we've got such great opportunities on the horizon that are coming to people very quickly. And I think we need to really be aware of those because they're probably going to be in most of our lifetimes. And, uh, and they will be a game changer. And I do think they're gonna happen. Um, and it's very interesting to see what, what is happening with those and how, and, and how that, that's happening. Um, and so, yeah, I wanted to cover a little bit about that to sort of bring people up to date about some of the changes that we're seeing. Uh, I mean, virtual reality for a long time has been very good for PTSD. Uh, there's been amazing success rate with people coming back from war zones, being able to be re uh, re virtually put into a war zone again and be around the sort of scenes made to mimic what they got the, develop their PTSD from so that they can learn to become more at peace with the, the, with both the symptoms and the scenarios and change their rational beliefs that they built around those scenarios when they develop PTSD so that's very very important and has made a massive has made some big shifts there as we're seeing so many different things shifting but I think the OCD landscape is definitely going to change with a lot of that, as it has been changing in so many ways in the last couple of years. Uh, still very much in the dark and has come out a long way, but it's still very far in the dark. But these things are going to be real uh, ch changing moments for, for OCD. So I think that will be great. OK, now let's go back and have a look at some of these questions. Second.
If you think you have OCD, what is the first step? Who do you go to? GP or specialist, please? Going to the GP is a good place to start. Uh, that's what I always recommend with people. I obviously am not in a position to diagnose OCD. Um, and so anyone who wants a diagnosis, good place to get started is going to the GP first. How long have you been symptom free? Many years now. Yeah, fearing any kind of uh, any kind of disease or anything, OCD can mimic those symptoms and create those in our body, so we can feel those. Uh, it's very good at hijacking that and jumping in before us. Uh, so always be aware of its sneakiness. I have OCD sensory motor. Any specific tips for the recovery of this type of OCD? I'm already doing acceptance exposure. The most important thing is wearing it like an uncomfortable coat, but at the same time, the main driving force is that you're scared that if you're stuck like that forever, with those sensations and symptoms, your life will be ruined. And because you're terrified of that, that's what's giving it the power. That irrational belief that you believe it would be awful, the worst thing ever if you are. But it actually isn't as scary as you think, because even at your worst, you're still only noticing it for a few hours a day, living your life fully, so it's still not as scary as you think it is. And it's realising that more, wearing it like an uncomfortable coat, taking it for the ride and so on, that gets under it and forms your new rational thinking. It takes a bit of time for that. Rob, I'm going through depersonalization, and it's confusing me. The same time I'm getting thoughts related to it and I don't know how to treat them. You need to, very much the same as the sensory motor OCD, you need to wear it like an uncomfortable coat, not trying to rid yourself of it. It's key, key, key with that one. Really is because uh, you, you, depersonalization, people get scared, think they're broken, think something's gone wrong and then they try and rid, rid, rid themselves of it internally and it does the absolute opposite. It's like trying to run from your shadow, except with, with anxiety, it's doing more than that. When you try and run from it, it, it grows and gets, gets bigger. Why do the themes change? Well, because your anxiety, you're, you're looking around for, is there anything else I could be scared of or so on? So it's just morphing to anything to get hold. Uh, and when you get over one thing, it looks for another thing to keep getting over. If any was locked to one thing, everyone would get better after they got over that one thing. Okay, guys, I thought I'd come on here just quickly to cover a few of those points. I'll see you on the next Instagram Live. All right, guys, bye.